I guess. Hey, everybody. So I'm here with Rob. And uh, Rob will choose whether or not he wants to share his full identity. I, I have a feeling that he won't. Uh, oh. But I'm John Lamasny, and, and here we're going to be talking in a Hangout, part of the Neckbeard Networks thing that I have been uh, trying to put together and have had a lot of fun with. We're going to talk about uh, the pairing of technology and fitness. And uh, Rob and I have talked about this many times, uh, centered mostly on a device that we're going to talk about in depth tonight called the Fitbit. But um, I actually posted earlier today on Facebook that I'm within about 10 pounds of my goal weight. I started off in April uh, at a high of um, about 290 pounds. And that's not healthy for anybody, but it certainly wasn't healthy for me. I'm about six foot two. And um, so I've lost a lot of weight. I'm, I'm down to about 211, and I'm stopping around two. That's awesome, man. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I figured that we would use this podcast, it's not exactly a podcast, but it's, it, you know, this conversation to talk about how technology can help somebody to become fit. And uh, Rob is particularly interested in this, too. We had good conversations offline. I thought that we would probably um, be able to help you a bit, if you're watching this as a viewer, to find out how technology can help you to get fit. So, hey, Rob, how are you doing? Good. Very good. Um, actually, really excited to talk about this because it's uh, such a neat little little gadget that I at first I was kind of skeptical about, and then one day talking to you, I got more interested, and then luckily my company decided to uh, give it like a trial and give it to its employees, anyone that wanted to use it, as long as they just log their steps. That's all you had to do with this, actually. I mean, Fitbit has a lot of really neat... Um, actually, I'm going to share my screen just to give kind of a quick overview. It shows you, like, uh, all your steps, calorie count. Um, you can log activity for uh, if you've done anything else, like cycling or anything, because this... Uh, we were talking that this doesn't really pick it up, right? Pick yeah, it up. I mean, it picks up your movement, but it doesn't pick it up in a way that's accurate comparative to walking. Yeah, exactly. And then you have your food, which today I, I didn't log anything, but it, let me just go back to... I can go back like a month or something like that. Just go back. Um, oops, this is my activity. And then my food... <laughs> See, I'm not as healthy as you. <laughs> no bars, which I'm working on switching. I'm going to do uh, start making shakes in the morning, but we can talk more about that later. And then cokes. I'm. I used to actually drink like three cokes a day, which is nuts. Um, but I've I've weaned down to uh, just uh, one coke a day. And then well, this day was definitely a really bad day. <laughs> Hot dogs. <laughs> beans and potato chips, but it just gives you a good idea where you can keep track of that. Your water, um, how much you drink, because you're supposed to drink, what was it, like 120 ounces or something? Yeah, 64, yeah. Oh. 64 uh, ounces is, is the recommended you know, baseline, but gotcha. you, you can drink more than that, but you probably shouldn't drink less. Yeah. you got to be careful with that, too, because it'll um, you can like wipe out important stuff in your body. If you drink too much, but um, just a I lot. Of, I don't know anybody that drinks too much water. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But I don't know. You always get those weird reports every now and then. So my, I'm not doing too well with my weight as compared to you. <laughs> you are quite impressive. Um, I've actually, I haven't logged anything, but uh, since August, I think I'm less than that. But I've actually gone up and down. It doesn't show my original, which I started at 177. Yeah, and then I went down five, and I think what happened this day is I think I, I weighed myself right after I ate, so that might be flawed. I think I'm still sitting right around 170, though. And so my, let me let me uh, talk about a, a different experience I've had with with these tools because I I agree with you if you're if you're going in and logging uh, in Fitbit if you're logging food and you're recording your weight it, it's a fairly manual process. Uh, and the thing about it is I didn't really 
care for Fitbit before I was part of this other network called My Fitness Pal, right? So I'll share my screen for a second and show you slightly different experience. So this is My Fitness Pal, and uh, if we go to yesterday, for example, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is a really good uh, day. So. I record all these things fairly manually. However, the thing that's cool about my fitness pal is it has a really great community uh, as opposed to, to Fitbit, which I think the community is lacking a bit. I, I, I participate in it and I have friends that are there, but I'm much more active in the community in, in my fitness pal. And like we encourage each other. I'll show you that for a second. If I go to my homepage on my fitness pal, for example, all the people who I'm friends with, um, are here, and uh, the reason I friended them is similar to the reason I might friend somebody on Facebook. We have something in common, or uh, we have a similar body type, or the same amount of weight to lose, or whatever. So this is my friend uh, Stacy, and it shows that she was under her calorie goal, and that uh, her diary is available to view, which I won't do for everybody. But um, so here I'll, I might say something encouraging, like. Um, way to go, right? And the thing that's nice about that is that, you know, it's just a little tiny bit of encouragement, and I can go all the way through this page and, and give everybody a little comment and participate, you know, and people participate back to me, right? So if I go to my profile... It's really neat. Yeah, you can see that I, I commented on all these people's pages, and then here was a little note that I put up, and... Uh, eight people responded. Here was uh, my weigh-in, and uh, ten people responded. And you can see that they're all very supportive. Congrats, you're doing awesome, excellent, good job, sir, awesome. And uh, it's just a very encouraging environment. But the best part about this site is the food database, right? So um, let's say that I want to... Let's say I just had a granola bar, and, and you said that you know you don't want to eat granola bars, but I eat granola bars every day, mm -hmm. sometimes too. And it's my philosophy is you can lose weight as long as you count the calories that you're eating. It it doesn't matter so much what it is you're eating. You could eat donuts and lose weight if losing weight is your goal. See, cal calories are the key. If if we're talking about nutrition, that's another thing entirely. That was my. Uh, that's where so. My so I guess I should just lay it out for just so we have kind of a, a base where what my goal is. So okay. um, my goal is so I was one seventy five or something like that. I needs to be very athletic. So my goal is to get to one sixty, losing weight wise, and then really ramp up building like muscle. But since I'm kind of like sitting steady here, um, I just wanted to kind of try a different angle and lose the granola bars because I have like low energy because I'm not moving a lot during the day. So what I was going to have is um, like these shakes that I would make. I actually got it. Wish I, I wish I had it in front of me. A really good re recipe for uh, a protein shake. Yeah. And I was going to have that in the morning and then right after my runs at in the evening. Um, so I was just switching that up. It wasn't, it wasn't that I don't like the granola bars. I do like them. Um, but I just wanted to try something different. You know, because it, it's just a slightly different goal. It's more uh, working towards toning and, and all that. Yeah, if you're doing that, I mean, it's certainly more important what you're eating as opposed to how much of it you're eating. And, and for me, it was so much about what, how much I was eating, right? Because it, it's all about calories. So uh, just to finish out the thing about MyFitnessPal, MyFitnessPal and Fitbit have a combination, have a uh, relationship, a partnership. Where when you act when you're active on Fitbit, the API from Fitbit talks with the API from My Fitness Pal and they exchange information. So when I walk in the room, right, and of course anybody with a with a Fitbit knows what this is. This is a little USB based dongle, and it's also a wireless um, connection, right? So I walk in the room and I'm still for five minutes. My Fitbit automatically connects with that, sends my data up to the web, and 
really quickly, let me share. So if I go to Fitbit, uh, today I was not particularly active, but yesterday I had a really great day. I had 19,000 stops, <laughs> right? And 15 well floors. So they expect you to do at least 10,000 steps. That's what your initial goal is. You can change this goal. And like here, you can switch a goal of how many weekly steps you take. Um, and because Sunday is my beginning of my week, you can see that I have 4% of my 70,000 weekly steps. But So funny. Um, We're so similar. I set Sunday as mine, too. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, 19,000 steps, it's almost twice what my daily expectation is. And so today I took a break and didn't feel too badly about it. Uh, 15 floors, they expect you to climb 10. 9 miles, they expect you to walk 5. 3,500 calories, they expect you to burn uh, 2,500, I think. And 1,219 of an active score, they expect 1,000. And this is kind of um, only means something according to this network. So anyway, you walk in the room, you're... you're activity is updated, you can see these beautiful charts where you see how active I was at certain times during the day. You can see when I took my walks. You can see when you took the most steps, right? Shows you the most steps per minute. You can see when I did my floors. And you can see the most active times during the day. Um, the other thing is it, it, I have a my weight recorded just like you do on here. However, I do this with a Fitbit scale. Yeah, how do you like that? I love it. So every morning, every morning around 8.30, I step on the scale. It automatically tells me my weight and my uh, body fat content. And body fat content, I think, is a much more accurate way of uh, determining whether or not, here, I'll show you body fat content. Um, a more accurate way of determining, you know, whether or not you're on track. If we go by BMI, a lot of people who look at me would say that, um, that I shouldn't lose that much more weight. And the funny thing about it is if I go by BMI, which uses a very old formula for determining whether or not you're healthy, I am in the overweight category. So am I, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I was in, if we go to all, you can see that I was in obese, in severely obese. And I'm now in overweight, which is fine. Uh, but lean versus, versus fat gives me a much better indication of whether or not I'm in the right place. And where I want to be is around 15% body fat. Uh, an athlete usually has about six. Uh, six is required for you to function properly. I don't necessarily need to be athletic. I just want to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And most people are in the range that I'm in now, somewhere between uh, 15 and 25. And I'm at 20% right now. So, and it records it every day. I can uh, go into month view and see, for example, where my percentages are and when I had higher percentages and, and so on. So the thing that's great about this too is that this information that I put into my Fit, Fitbit site just by walking in the door automatically updates my fitness pal and my fitness pal also talks back. And as a result, it's a much easier thing the food database here is fantastic. So if I wanted to add food to this day, I could um, click on add food and evening snack. And these are the most frequent foods I eat. So I drink coffee about four times a day. Coffee is at the top of my list. I mostly eat apples, diet soda, bananas, oranges. Kind Bar, this is uh, this incredible company makes these granola bars that are mostly just nuts and honey. And um, Sounds good. Yeah. Several times a week I'll go to Wawa and get a veggie shorty. Uh, flat rounds, those sort of like flatbread uh, rounds, I eat a lot of those. I eat a lot of nuts, like shelled nuts. So uh, peanuts are high on my list. I eat regular granola bars because there's plenty of grains, etc. in there. I eat eggs 
grapes, you know, so this is mostly fruit, vegetables, and whole grains. Uh, salad bar, any place, any chance I get to go to a salad bar and like load up on salad, it's, it's low calories with a lot of volume. Uh, carrots, chicken breast, onions, more granola bars, uh, brown rice, lettuce, Portuguese roll, veggie tempura at this place in Princeton that I love, tomatoes, and uh, fresh mozzarella cheese. So it's nice. If I want to search on something, what was something you ate today, Rob? Uh, I was pretty unhealthy today. I had uh, buffalo wings. <laughs> buffalo wings. So I'll do a search on buffalo wing. And it'll give me a whole bunch of different choices, right? Boneless buffalo wings, uh, branded buffalo wings, buffalo wild wings wings, Domino's buffalo wings, Applebee's buffalo wings, Market Pantry, uh, Snyder's, etc. Let's just go for boneless buffalo wings. Let's say I have three of them. I could uh, add that food to the diary, and we'll see what it is. So, a hundred and... Uh, 60 calories for three boneless buffalo wings. The thing that's really cool about that is that um, as long as I know how many calories I'm supposed to be eating in a day, such as 1,824, and as long as I stay beneath that number, I'm good. And I lose weight. And my weight loss has been steady, right? If we go to weight and we go to all. You can see this is where I started in April, and this is where I'm at. It's been a steady, constant drop. And that is all because uh, I record everything I eat. Anything that goes in my mouth, I record. And my fitness pal helps me to stay active and to keep my metabolism up and to uh, burn calories to a degree where I'm almost guaranteed to lose because I'm burning on top of the right amount of calories. Do you uh do they have like an app for that to make it easier or do you just have to you just have to use the web portal for that? They have an app on uh, iPhone and an app on Android and uh, my fitness pal that's part of the reason why I found out about it was I did a search on uh, weight loss on Android's Play Store a long time ago. And my fitness pal was the best recommended app for it. And the food database is available on the app. Yeah. So as I'm walking around during the day, I'll, I'll go to Qdoba or I'll go to wherever and eat something, take out my phone, open up my fitness pal, add the calories. And then when I get back to my desk, uh, Fitbit, of course, records what I walked. And as a result, um, I get the other part of it. As a matter of fact, I want to make sure that uh, Fitbit recorded my new steps. Right. So, anyway, between those two things, between in input and output, it's predictable whether or not you're going to gain or lose. Mm -hmm. And when I end up maintaining, it'll be around 2,000 calories, which is like 600 more calories than I eat now a day. So between those two things, um, I think that anybody who wants to lose weight and do it sensibly can can do a great job with these two tools because it's all just numbers. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> it definitely uh, definitely helps to keep track. And at first, it, it I remember doing this a while ago, keeping track of my food, but I think it was more of the tool. I don't remember the name of the tool I was using, but it seemed like tedious. But then I started using Fitbit which now I'm going to start using my fitness pal because I like that community uh, feature. But I started using Fitbit because it, its selection was so much more robust than this other tool. And it seems like my fitness pal is an even larger. Um, and I, I like how it talks to it. But uh, now it's just it's kind of like second nature. It's just it's all I'm doing is it doesn't even feel like it's a task. I, I kind of actually enjoy it where I'm I'm at tracking wise. Right, there's some gamification in it. I mean, there's definitely like if you feel like you're accomplishing something, especially compar comp comparing yourself to your peers, yeah. which of course all that gamification is available in Fitbit. If 
if Rob and I want to have a contest for the most steps in a week, like we can do that because I'm seeing his numbers and he's seeing mine. Yep. And there are other applications that do that, like Endomondo and and those sorts of things. But um, if we wanted to have a contest on weight loss, or we want you know how many pounds per week or whatever, or we wanted to have a contest about most active time or whatever, we could we could do that, and it makes it more fun. And fun is the point, right? Yep. So uh, I, when I went into MyFitnessPal and showed you like what I eat most regularly that automatically shows up there just because of the frequency of those foods, that gives you a good indication of what I eat. But um, I also just came back from a grocery trip and I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, this issue. There are friends of mine who say, oh, well, it's easy for you to eat fruits and veggies all the time because um, – you can afford it, like I'm some sort of rich, you know, dude. And I, I always think it's funny because I spent like 60 bucks and I got a week's worth of food. And uh, normally I speak, I spend between 60 and 100. And that's also like buying food for my kids and buying food for friends who might come over or whatever. But it's all. Um, I mean, the biggest expense actually is granola bars because the kind bars are like two dollars each. Wow! But they're really, really good, and I get like one for each day. You know, so it's a special treat that I look forward to every day. But um, I also bought some potatoes, like um, just about a pound and a half of potatoes. I got a pint of strawberries a bag of uh, seedless grapes, a quart of fat-free milk, a bunch of bananas, a bag of peaches, a container of Campari tomatoes. I got uh, a bag of carrots, a bag of gala apples, a bag of navel oranges, and the um, granola bars. And it's like... The only thing that I could think of to recommend to somebody who wants to eat fruit and vegetables is to see if you have a um, a shared community farm organization like a CSA because you can spend $600 for a full share or $300 for a half share. Uh, and in our area, there are a couple to choose from. But um, the CSA means that at the beginning of the season, like around May or June, you spend your 300 bucks, and you, like I said, I just spent 60 bucks. so how many $60 weeks am I going to spend before I hit $300? You know what I mean? Do the math. And you get from May or June until September. They have two weeks left right now at the one that um, I just visited. And you get four bags of fresh vegetables as a half share. A full share is like eight bags of fresh vegetables. Wow. Carrots and potatoes and kale and romaine lettuce and uh, peppers and uh, rutabaga and uh, spices, not spices, uh, herbs. And everything's fresh and it's all local and it was not sitting on a refrigerated truck for two weeks. So anybody who happens to live in a populated area where there's a lot of farms, look for CSAs in your area because if your thing is about the expense, if you don't want to spend 60 bucks a week, you don't have to. And next year, I will not. I'll be paying for a CSA share. And I'll just, that's where I'll get my vegetables from and I'll supplement it with uh, a visit to the grocery store every now and again. Or go to your local produce market or go to a farm market and buy your stuff there where it's going to be cheaper and you're also going to be supporting your local uh, your local community as opposed to supporting some dude in whatever Spain who is shipping his vegetables overseas which is just a ridiculous idea yeah yeah that's so, actually uh, another another point that I, I think people really miss um, because it's not it's not as tangible as as going to the food store every every week and seeing that sixty bucks. But if you're like investing in this and 
what you're getting back from it is nutrients, and you're not getting sick as much. And it's, I'll touch back on that, but um, you're spending less money at the doctor, which is going to be way less than paying 60 bucks, um, whether your insurance is covering it or whatever. And it's just, they don't, I don't think people, I think that's a hard thing for people to see is how much they're actually spending. And how much they're saving by being fit. Yep, exactly. And uh, especially long term. I mean, just thinking super long term, getting old is expensive. <laughs> like, it's just a fact of life. Um, it's, it's an unfortunate fact, but it's just a fact of life. And and you're, you're not just saying this sort of spontaneously. You know something about this topic, right? I, yeah, and I've actually, um, I think we've talked a little bit about uh, CSA, and I just, all the stuff I've read online, like I go to a lot of different um, blogs to just try to get an idea, I'm gauging on how to eat healthier. I'm still, as you saw my my uh, food logging, I'm still kind of, I do have like those binge days that are, are terrible, but you can have those days if you eat healthy. Uh, 12 other days and then like one day you have a good one. You might even be able to do six in one. I know different diets have different things where you can actually eat healthy for five days and then on the weekends you binge. Um, I don't I've heard success stories but I don't I don't know if that's like for it's, me. But it's, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with it. I, I think that um, you, if you were planning for that, you could probably do a carryover thing where you do a little bit extra of your restriction during the week yeah. and then you normally would if you were doing it just seven days. And then on the weekend, just eat your extra calories and mathematically and um, nutritionally, it'll work out. But binging in general, I think, is a societal need not a personal need you know like you can enjoy something if if you can focus on the thing that's in front of you whether it be a a, a pile of carrots or it be a pizza or it be a whatever and you can sort of pull out the enjoyment from one slice of pizza that you would that you think you're getting from three but you're not really paying attention to what you're stuffing in your mouth if you pay attention to the one slice if you really taste the tomatoes and you really spend an extra 50 cents for like real cheese or whatever or better yet make your own pizza so that you're controlling every aspect of it you're going to get so much more enjoyment out of it and not need to eat a half a pizza yeah that that's my philosophy on it and um, you use the word diet which is shorthand for a, a sort of way of thinking about food right uh, or you could use the word diet to mean the things that I'm actually eating Yep. Or you could use the word diet to mean um, a restriction of the kinds of food that I eat or whatever. I tend not to use the word diet, and yep. I'm, I'm not saying that anybody else shouldn't, but I, I don't use it myself because I'm part of the camp that says that this nutritional change for me is just that. It's a nutritional change that I, that I try to keep for the rest of my life. It's not a a temporary fix which most people think of a diet as you know well I'll just I'll just diet until I'm better or I'll just diet until uh, you know I'm down to my goal weight and then uh, I can eat the way that I used to eat they may even not they may not even think that through or say that out loud but in your mind if you're going to an end date just to get to the end date so that you can enjoy the way that your body looks and continue to eat a pizza at a time, that's that's a problem. It's actually a really good point. I wasn't even thinking of it like that, of the different connotations with it. Um, I guess in this aspect, I just meant like my daily eats, you know? Right, right. But, uh, it's like that, uh, <laughs> this is slightly off topic, but it's like the color thing, like you, you, everyone associates red with negative and green with something positive or earthy or something like that, right? So that's a good point. I mean, sometimes if you <clears throat> eliminate that word, it further excels you at achieving what you need to achieve. Absolutely. If you if you think of it as a lifelong change, I, I think that you're better off in the long term because if you can learn to enjoy, as I said, if you can really celebrate a slice of pizza you and, and try to do that every day, it's sustainable. You know, sustainable is such an important word to me. And that's part of it. It's like, how do you keep it going after 
you've lost your weight? How do you keep it going after you feel good every day? How do you keep it going after you've gotten all the compliments and the compliments start to go away because you're just the, the thin guy now? You know, it's it has to be more about you and the way that you sort of, your own light shines, so to speak, not to get too spiritual. And it's so funny, I, I do a workshop on graphic design, uh, and we talk about color in the workshop. And uh, one, of the, one of the slides I have actually talks about this idea of people saying that uh, red equals anger or red equals whatever. And what's really cool is, like, I bring up a slide with a whole bunch of red images, and I say, what's the story of this image? You know, and it'll be like a sun from a distance, like from the Soho Observatory. And then I'll show a picture right next to it of a sun, and it's a bright red picture, but it's like a sunset, you know, and it has a calm to it, and it has a, a certain, like, feeling of hope to it. And then I show another picture next to it of a... A, red, a bright red flower, and it, and it has to do with hope and Christmas and promise and all these things, or holidays. And um, at the end of the slide, where I go through like seven pictures, I'm like, so what does red mean? And everybody's like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. It, it means whatever is the context of what you're looking at that's red. Yeah. You know, and the same is true for, for dieting. If you If you go into it saying, well, I can't lose weight because... I can't restrict myself to just eat broccoli every day or whatever. I, you know, my answer to that is, yeah, if you say that you can't, you definitely can't. You're, you're, if you're coloring it red and red equals angry for you, then you're probably going to be angry. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, uh, I mean, but some people, I mean, you just kind of get into the, it, like you said, it's a societal thing we get into kind of like a mindset because the people around you are saying that, so um, it just reflects ne negatively um, on that. And, I mean, you say societally, that's absolutely true. It's also like McDonald's doesn't want you to eat better, not not to really pick on McDonald's. I mean, I, I go to McDonald's from time to time. I tend not to go there typically, but uh, they don't want you to eat better because when you eat better, you eat there less. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're perfectly happy to make a hamburger look delicious uh, on their poster and say, uh, you're loving it because we're not talking about how you feel about yourself, of course, because you're not loving how you feel about yourself. You're loving how good this hamburger tastes. I have a funny story about that, and this might just be weird coincidence. So I don't really eat McDonald's. If I eat fast food, it's like it's like Wendy's night. You know I don't like name dropping, but whatever. Wendy's is nice. I, I mean I don't I don't really eat fast food to begin with a lot because <laughs> where my house is, I have to drive twenty minutes to go to a fast food joint and it's like That's really cool though, right? It. Yeah, it makes it it makes it a lot better. The only time I really go is if I'm working late. And yeah. It's like oh man, I really don't want to put something together when I get home. Um, or just I just want to eat when I get on my way home and then go to bed, which is also not a good thing if you're trying to lose weight, eat before yeah. you go to bed. Uh, I, I, uh, I feel differently about that too, but we'll talk about it. But um, so last week when I was coming home from uh, my flight, I had McDonald's because it was like the only thing open at one in the morning. And uh, <clears throat> it was gross, by the way. Um, I just, I don't know, I'm not a McDonald's fan. And I got sick. I'm still sick. Um, and the last time I had it, which was like probably seven months ago, I got sick then too. So I don't know if it's like just weird coincidence or just my body rejecting it and just saying no. Don't so, I mean, we, uh, we, I talk about like what my grocery list was and, and somebody would say, well, where's your meat? And I would say, you know, I eat meat from time to time, but it's usually like a treat or, or usually something that is almost like secondary to whatever. Like, I'll, I'll eat pizza a couple times a week, and I'll have pasta if I really want it. But, like, meat is one of those things that, like, every once in a while I'll be in the mood for a hot dog or whatever, and I'll have a hot dog, and that'll be that. And, you know, but, uh, like, I don't crave McDonald's. I don't crave hamburgers really anymore. I, I'll have a veggie burger, or, like, the other day I went to Cheat Burger, Cheat Burger, just to check it out, because it was there's a new Cheat Burger, Cheat Burger in Princeton on yeah. Nassau. Um, 
and I ended up getting a veggie burger, which was perfectly good. And like, there's something about going to Five Guys that's really nice. Like, if you really want a hamburger, go to Five Guys and go get a hamburger. Yeah, enjoy that. There's a uh, there's actually another new burger joint. Uh, Bob Bobby. Uh... Bobby. Oh yeah, Bobby's Burger Cows. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, over in uh in Market Fair. I heard it's really good. I'm wow. sure it's amazing. I mean, Bobby Flay is the man. But yeah. Uh, but if I go to McDonald's and I can remember the last time I had a hamburger and I just got like a hamburger, like a tradi- like a 1950 style like single decker hamburger with some shallots on it. Yeah. Because they put shallots on it. It's a little little known fact about McDonald's. And uh, <laughs> so. I had one. It might have been a cheeseburger or whatever, and I was just so ill after. That's that's actually exactly what I had. I had two uh, cheeseburgers, and the cheese wasn't even melted, so I'm kind of thinking that they just kind of, like, heated it up. Yeah. I think that just, uh, but not there's, just There's something that about it. it. You know, you, you heard about the pink slime controversy? That is huge, and actually, I just read an article about that. Um, probably last week that it's making a comeback because uh, and the company actually quoted on it that Americans are um, just short term. They'll just they'll focus on one thing, which is so true. It's so true. Right, we're and loaded with once, things to once focus it goes on. Over, boom, back to it. and there. I actually think they're on an uprise right now. Um, but I mean, it's that kind of thing. We're we're talking about if you belong to a CSA. Especially yeah. in organic CSA, you're not going to have to worry about pink slime. I'd really like to talk to you about that offline if you yeah. don't mind hearing, because I know you don't want to broadcast and then lose like a spot where you're going to go. But I'd, I'd, no, 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 no. I mean, this this place is really open. I'll I'll talk about it for people in the Princeton area, uh, Griggstown uh, Quail Market is the is the place that um, offers these half shares and these full shares. And uh, I just had a conversation the other day with the owner, and he said that they are not keeping a list anymore. They are just increasing their production to meet needs. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's awesome too. And, uh, you know, it's I, I shook the guy's hand and said, I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. So it was 300 and was it 600 for a full? It's like or? 350 or 360 and 670 or 700. For a, it's for a full season, half share or full share. Gotcha. And a full share is really too much for one person per week. Yeah. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk with you about is I wanted to know what your thoughts were on the new Fitbit uh, tracker model called the One. I think it's amazing. I think it's the coolest thing, and I really want to get one. I really want to get... Um, because I was looking while you were going back and using uh, your scale and looking at your logs. So my log, I guess when I log my weight, it doesn't have all that calculation. And I guess your scale generates that, the lean versus fat and all. Yeah, yeah. I have a BMI, um, but I don't have that lean versus fat, which I think is a really cool thing. And yeah, because BMI is, is just based on your height, your age, your gender, and your weight. I don't. Yeah, I really don't like it because I don't think it's fair, especially in your example. And most people are like yell at me. They're like, "You're not overweight. You don't need to do these things." And I'm like, "No, I'm not technically, but according to the scale, I'm not doing this because of the scale." By the way, just to throw that out there, but it's just kind of funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, I just wanted to uh, show. I just wanted to show. What do I want to show on here? The new... No, I wanted to show what I look like when I'm proper according to BMI. Uh, If I go to my profile and I go to my photos, this is is what I was like when I was at my... I was like above 300 pounds. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember. I remember. Uh, yeah, I never I was, knew you at that big point. Big dude. Yeah. And then um, when I was at my thinnest, this is probably when I was at my thinnest, and you can see, like, my cheeks are a little bit sunken. 
And, I mean, it's like skull-like, you know, and I'm not too far from that now, actually. And the high end of BMI for me, I was only at the high end, which is like 290 or 295. No, I'm sorry, 195 or 190. And I don't want to be that thin anymore. I want to be like around 200. I also like the round number aspect of 200 pounds. Um, but a lot of people, you know, they, they immediately went to the conclusion that I was, that I had cancer or something. And that's not, that's not good. No. So, I mean, BMI doesn't work for me. Body fat content works for me very, very well. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I would, uh, I think that's always the way to go. And there's actually, I wish I um, had the article, how there's this perception that America's fat because of this BMI index, and they're actually thinking about revamping it because they're saying a lot of people um, aren't fat or what, obese or whatever they're calling it um, today, you know? And uh, they actually said we plateaued, America's plateaued too, because I guess the energy level that it takes to get to that certain level um, we just can't go any further. I wish I had the article because I'm probably not doing it any justice at all. But that we might be seeing a revamp and an actual different outlook on America in the next uh, year or so. Well, that's that's sort of why I like body fat content because it's it's yeah. really based on the reality of how much fat you have in your body. And the thing about BMI that is respectable is there is a correlation between health outcomes and BMI. In other words, if I am 200 and, uh, I'm sorry, 195 pounds, I'm less likely to have heart disease, less likely to have sleep apnea, less likely to have high cholesterol, less likely to have all these things. Yeah. But the same is true of a vegetarian lifestyle. The same is true of low uh, body fat content. And so I, I do pay attention to those things. I'm not just looking in the mirror and saying, Oh well, I look good. I'm I'm done, because there there are health concerns that are cor correlated with a certain weight per height. You know, uh, you know what one of the major ones is. Um, again, another article. <laughs> yeah, you um, need to bring up your articles, right? I know. I actually can quote this one because it's uh, one that um, directly affects my line of work. Is uh, diabetes is directly correlated with that and is um, supposed to jump like 20 percent in the next five years. Oh, um, no question. Globally, this is not just America, this is globally. That's a lot of people. It's just incredible. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So, uh, I mean, the other thing too is that I personally have, have lost a whole multitude of problems that I had between uh, bone and joint issues to sleep apnea, which I had sleep apnea up until a couple months ago. Um, sleep apnea, of course, when you stop breathing in your sleep, which uh, there have been a few celebrities who have died of sleep apnea. Uh, I have, I've had rashes in the past, like things like eczema and psoriasis that I don't have issues with anymore, mostly because of, of heavy weight gain. Um, just general pain in existing, you know, because your body is, your organs are all under this incredible strain. Yeah. Uh, whether it be chest pain or, or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, but it's neat to see. I really feel like there's been a shift in people being more aware and alert of these things. Well, how about uh, the, the CSPI and their, Push to have calories on menus in fast food joints. That or, is great. I love it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, lo I love how they have these uh, on uh, restaurants now. It definitely helps, especially if you are a calorie counter. I mean, you don't have to be. It's just being aware of things, and it's right in your face. You're like, wow, that thing's 2,000 calories just eating that alone. <laughs> just eating that one thing is all of your day's calories. In yeah. my case, 2,000 calories would be... Over. All of my calories and then some. Yeah. You know, and it's just not worth it. You say, I'm going to be done with this thing in 15 minutes or, or if I ate the way that I ate before where I didn't really enjoy each bite, yeah. uh, 
it, it would have been over in 30 seconds. You know, I stuff something in my mouth and it's like done. And then you keep on eating because you think that you, you, you don't necessarily equate calories with sustenance. You equate the, the food with joy, yeah. you know? And it's, if you need more joy, man, you're, you're just going to keep on eating 2,000 calorie tidbits until you're stuffed, satiated. It's funny because I actually, up until, I don't, um, I was at the movies, I think, three months ago, um, and now they have those calories on the boards and stuff. <laughs> I don't even think there is something there that's under 2,000 calories. It's just nuts. You order a small bag of popcorn, and it's like 3,000 calories, and then if you get uh, pretzels with, like, the cheese dip, it's like 10,000 calories or something absurd. Well, meanwhile, you know, if you just, if you take, like, unpopped popcorn kernels and you spray, like, a little bit of uh, oil in a pan and you just throw it, like, throw the popcorn in the pan and put a thing on top of it, it's nothing. It's like eating corn, you know, because there's nothing inherently caloric, high caloric about popcorn. It's all the, all the butter sauce yeah. and all of the flavorings and all the nonsense that, Exactly. It doesn't taste like popcorn anyway. Like, why are you not just eating popcorn? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. But to get back to your original question, I'm definitely going to get uh, the new one because I, I think it's neat that you can sync it to your phone while you're going. And then, um, I mean, I like looking down um, and seeing my current day, this today, like, like you, today has been kind of of uh, not the best day. Um, it's kind of like an average day. And seeing how far I've gone in, in my activity. And actually, because of this thing, um, it's, it's motivated me in, in so many different ways. And I meant to bring this up earlier, and it's just incredible. So at work, I'm on the third story. Um, so it's, it's six flights of stairs unless I park on the bottom floor and then it's eight flights of stairs. And I used to take the elevator every day. Yeah. Um, and now I'm, when I have this thing on me, I'm just, which is pretty much all the time, unless I just forget it for some reason. And now I just, I always take the stairs cause I want to, I want to gain. You want to get your numbers up. I want to get my numbers up. Like I want to get my steps up. Because you want to beat me, Rob, because you want to beat my numbers. <laughs> I do. I do, and I haven't Rude, yet. Man. I haven't yet. Um, and I thought this week was going to be pretty good because yesterday I was in New York and I was walking around Central Park, which is beautiful. I've never walked around in Central Park before. Most steps I've ever taken in a day, definitely in Central Park. It's it's huge, by the way. It's a lot. It's very deceiving. And it's an hour away. I mean, it's so close for us, you know? I know. I know. I know. So, um, by the way, just to go back to this thing before we talk about the new one, this thing is incredibly durable. <laughs> so I forgot one time that I left it on, like, my running shorts. Yeah. And I did a load of laundry. So this thing went through a full cycle of washer and a full cycle of dryer. And I was just like, as soon as I took it out, I was looking, I was just like, it's done. I was like, I'll let this sit for four hours, or... It was four days, I think I let it sit for. Something like that. So, I, wonder, so, I wonder how many steps it recorded while it was in the dryer. <laughs> That's a good point. I wish I checked that. I did not check that. But uh, it came back. At first it was a little spotty, and then it just came back full force. And I'm like, this thing is amazing. I was just so impressed about the build quality. And it does seem it does seem kind of plasticky, but it's not. it's not – too plasticky, and I don't know if you can see the inside. Yeah. That's where, like, uh, that's where you charge it. You just, you just, yep, I can't show you on mine. Well, well I'll, I'll show. So it, it goes like this. Here's your uh, USB based dongle. And you, you can turn it either way. Yeah. You plug it in, and it shows you your battery power. By the way, it holds battery for days. Yeah, seriously, it, it easily like seven days. Yeah. But the thing you gotta watch out is someone was telling me that it only records five days of everything, and then seven days, it uh, six and seven, it locks down to just steps and not. I don't think it does like height and all that. I'm not sure. I don't. 
No, that's, that's, I never looked into it. But that's not true. It it records uh, flights of, of of flights of height every day. It records everything every day. It doesn't care what day it is. Oh, okay. Well, no, I mean if you don't sync it for five days after. Five oh days. yeah, but I mean for me, I I sync it every time I walk into. So, incidentally, I'll show you. I have this here. The reason I have this here is because uh, I tried to buy an extra one so that I could plug it in at work so that when I sit down at my desk it also syncs or to keep it with my laptop. So uh, you can't buy one of these. So you might ask me, John, how did you get an extra one? And I would say, well, Rob, the way that I might have gotten this one is that I lost my Fitbit, which was a sad, <laughs> sad day. And I had to buy another one. However, I actually have three of these. And the way that I got the third one is I contacted customer service and I said, how can I purchase another USB dongle? And they said, sir, what is a dongle? And I said, no, how do you get one of the USB things that you uh, connect your Fitbit to? And they said, what do you mean by USB? And I said, how do you get this thing? <laughs> and they said, oh, those? We'll give you one of those. So they just email or mailed me out one free of charge. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, they're a case study for customer service. I've, I've talked to them quite a few times about their charts and about various things that I think are useful. And uh, they're amazing. I mean, they, they definitely want you to have success with their product. And that's why they're, they are in the news. That's why people are talking about them. That's why... I bought both their scale and their uh, ultra tracker, and why I will probably buy the one. So why don't you tell us about the differences between this one that we both have and the one? So that this one, uh, you just you do have to sync to. Uh, I'm just gonna hold it so we can talk about which one's which. This one you have to sync to um, over the air in your house. But the new one, if you if you spend the hundred bucks, because there's two versions of it, right? Yeah. Um, the first version is just like this. You have to sync in inside your house. I think it's sixty dollars, maybe. Yeah, and the other one you're talking about is called the Zip. It's like a big fat yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then the second one is a hundred, and it does all this, and then it syncs to your phone through Bluetooth, which is great. And I think they didn't. I, when I was watching their little. Uh, their show um, about it. Um, I wasn't completely tuned in, but I think they're coming up with a new app for it. Yeah, they have a new app, app that's iPhone good. only right now. And the iPhone app, that's one of the reasons why I haven't pre-ordered it, is they don't have an Android solution yet. Yeah. I'll they do have, they have an Android app, but it will not sync with the, with the Fitbit One tracker. Uh, and both the one and the zip, the zip is sort of like circular. Uh, mm -hmm. Both the one and the zip will sync over Bluetooth. It will sync if you plug in a Bluetooth or if you have Bluetooth on your computer. It'll just use Bluetooth in order to connect. And they do not have a rechargeable battery as they do in the Ultra Tracker that we both have. Oh, really? That yeah. Okay, that's kind of a downside, but yeah, I felt the same way. But I think maybe in the one that it is a rechargeable battery. It's in the zip that you can switch out the battery and it's just like a watch battery and it lasts for months. Yeah, I think it's like three months or something like that. That's not too bad. No, uh, not at all. I just, I just enjoy recharging it. And I mean, usually the way that I recharge is I'll plug it into this dongle like once a day for like 15 minutes while I'm sitting at my desk and that's really all I need to do it. I know. I I think I might do it once a week, if that. Sometimes it might even be two times a week. It's that it's that powerful. Yeah. Sorry, I was looking down. Um, I was just gonna show the current app, and uh, it's pretty good. I mean, it's nothing nothing easy. It actually it's showing. Well, lift it up so that we can see it. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it'll turn. Nope. So, so it shows you your steps. Then it shows, oh, you can reset your uh, goal, which is kind of neat. I, I keep it like you at the original. And then you have you can tweet about it, which is cool, because then you can interact with more people. And then you can change days. 
So this is yesterday. Uh, right, and I actually set my Fitbit to uh, broadcast my steps every day. Like when I, at the end of the day, when I when I put it into the dongle, yeah. it automatically connects and sends out my day's steps. That's good, especially because it, it can help you um, keep track and make sure that you sync. Because I, I I didn't do that. I should do that. So this is uh, the activity. So it's just like on, on the web. It's very, very clean um, the way they did it. And I really enjoy it, especially the colors. Kind of gets you motivated just with the colors. Yeah. And then uh, you can see your weight. You can log your weight. Um, is your... So I know your uh, scale is over the air, but can you sync... Do you know if you would be able to sync it to the phone? Is no, nothing awesome? syncs with my phone. It's My phone is just a a way of seeing the content on the website. Yeah. But, um, well, I wasn't sure if it had, like, Bluetooth in it, like the new one coming up. It has Wi-Fi. So when I step on the scale, it automatically updates because my scale and my computer are in the same room. Yeah. And so, therefore, my, my phone is immediately updated because gotcha. the phone always looks at the website. But the scale doesn't talk to my phone at all. Gotcha. Yeah, so then I guess they wouldn't even really need that because it's over over the air. So you got your lean versus fat. It's basically the same thing you're seeing on the on the web, and there's you. I only have you, and you're kicking my butt right now. <laughs> Steps. Um, and then all your other stuff. So it's pretty much the same thing on the web, but it's very it's set up very nicely, um, the interface. So, so um, we're coming up, we're... we're actually a little bit over our 10 o'clock hour, but uh, I just wanted to give a little bit of a tease about what we're going to talk about in the future, because it, it won't always be Fitbit. What we really want to talk about is ways that we can use technology in order to enhance our nutrition, how we can learn about things, um, how we engage ourselves in wanting to feel better, look better, uh, and, and be better. And um, I'm really excited about the prospect. Thank you so much for spending time with me tonight and talking about stuff. Thanks for uh, setting this up. I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, continuing the series. Me too. And we should uh, think about getting together and doing a walk and maybe talking about that in a future episode. I would definitely be for that. And uh, maybe even doing like a walk and talk show if that's possible. That'd be kind of neat too. That'd be very possible. I don't think we could do it uh, video. We could definitely do it audio. Maybe it's like a... a uh, well, it depends. If we have Wi-Fi, I could yeah. use my Nexus, and we could do a Hangout that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but one way or another, we can we'll definitely talk about it. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks again, John. This is All great. All right, Rob. Um, so probably next Sunday, yeah? Next Sunday at 9. Fantastic. If that works for you. <laughs> yeah, it definitely works for me. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Later.